Okay, let's look at atoms and molecules in this video. So basically, uh, let me give you a thing. Okay, you have your food. And this food can be anything. Uh, let's take an example of a burger maybe. A burger predominantly consists of a bun. Okay, or a bread, you which you may call it, whichever way. Then it has vegetables like let's say tomatoes, onion. You put in some sauces around it. Okay. And things like that. Now a burger basically, if I put it like this, it's a combination of these three things, or maybe more even, you know. Let's call them A, B, and C. If I pick up one of them, let's say the buns, okay? A bun is basically made of something which is called matter. We understood about matter in the earlier videos, right? Now, if you start dividing the matter, which is buns, okay? Let's say originally you have this one, you put out a small portion of it, which is known as basically a particle, right? Then you break up it into two parts, right? Then you pick up another part, you still break it up into two parts, and you keep on repeating this process unless and until you reach a stage where, you know, you reach something as small, which is incapable of any further division, right? So you reach a stage where you've got such a small particle, and I mean, obviously this cannot be done physically, you can do it through some chemical processes and all. You reach a situation where you reach a stage where whatever you get after division is so small that you cannot divide it further. Right? This smallest state which is there, which cannot be divided any further, is known as atom. Okay? And the meaning of atom is something which is indivisible. It means in divisible. You cannot divide it any further. Now we took an example of a burger but it could be anything. Let's say for example salt, silver, gold, fabric, any of these things. Each one of them is made up of various components just like we spoke in case of burger. And if you start dividing any of these components ultimately you are going to reach a stage where you cannot divide this any further. So the smallest particle is basically known as something which is called atom or indivisible. Now, scientists discovered that these atoms of individual, uh, what you say, matter, do not exist independently. So let's say, for example, if I talk about any of the uh, atoms, you take the case of hydrogen. Okay, the atoms of hydrogen may not exist independently, right? But let's say we know that water or H2O is formed of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen, right? So what these scientists said was that in most of the cases, the atoms may not exist individually or separately, but may exist in some form or combinations. So let's say hydrogen and oxygen they exist together to form one molecule of water. What this means is, when these two exist together, what they form, so let's say you have A1, which is the atom 1, and A2, which could be anything, when they exist together, this is, situation is known as a molecule, right? And depending on what kind of molecules are present, okay the characteristics and the properties of a particular thing will be different right so let's say if you have the atoms of hydrogen and oxygen you may have water depending on whether they are in the right combination right whereas on the other hand if you have the atoms of carbon okay and oxygen what it will form is not going to be water, it's going to be carbon dioxide. Again, depending on the correct proportions 
mean existence so the nature and the property of the atoms or molecules okay so the nature of atoms or molecule will decide what is the nature of the property of the matter which is formed by a combination of these right now coming back to atom atoms are actually very very small very 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 i mean i may keep on using this word very for a long number of time but still yeah, i may not reach a situation but these are very small particles right the smallest known atom is that of hydrogen okay so hydrogen is actually the smallest atom which is there right and basically you must be wondering then how do i say which is the smallest one so in case you have any atom okay you basically see what is the radius i'm sure you must be understanding what's the meaning of radius so basically through the radius of an atom which is also known at as time as atomic radius the length of the atom is the length of the size of the atom is determined right and this length or the size of the atom is determined in nanometers now you must be wondering what is nanometer nanometer is nothing but it's actually a representation where you have 1 divided by 10 to the power 9 of a meter so 1 nanometer is equal to 1 divided by 10 to the power 9 meter or in other words if you have 1 meter if you divide it into so many segments such that you know you have it 10 to the power 9 so how much will that be let's see 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it's almost 100 crores okay or for people abroad who are there it's thousand million so when you divide one meter into thousand million that's where when you reach the size of one nanometer and the size of the atoms is determined in terms of nanometer so basically what that means is that these atoms are actually so small that you cannot see them with your naked eyes too small even you know you have to use the best of the microscopes and then also probably you may not be able to see the size of the atoms so I hope you would have understood about atoms and molecules look forward to having you in further videos as well thank you for being with us today